Hi there, I'm Landon with A1 Comics. I'm here to talk about some unique comic book collectibles today. We're going to use the specific example of Spawn number one, uh, talk about the various uh, and sometimes disputed first appearances, why they're interesting, what people are interested in paying for them, and comparing that to their, uh, their print runs and census data. So, the book that everybody knows, this is Todd McFarlane's Spawn Number One, which came out in May of 1992, specifically May 10th. Uh, it distributed about 1.7 million copies. There's over 16,000 of them on the census, and a 98 runs you between 150 and 175 dollars. There are newsstand versions of this book, and there is a black and white limited release cover uh, that accompanied this book. Uh, around the same time that also goes um, for an extreme premium relative to this book. Earlier this year we had many, uh, a few copies, not many, uh, 90, 92, 94, and 96. Um, they actually all sold the day we got them back from CGC. Uh, sometimes that tells you maybe you priced it a little bit too low. It also tells you that the market um, just had a much higher demand for that book uh, than you would necessarily expect, and they just don't surface uh, either on the internet or on eBay very often. But besides this book and besides the black and white, there are two other Spawn collectibles um, that actually predate their, uh, these books' releases um, that are very interesting to discuss and to know a little bit more about. So specifically, the one that most people talk about is the Malibu Sun number 13, which features Spawn on the cover, uh, he has a different color scheme for his costume, and the logo is noticeably very different than the final logo that was used um, by Todd McFarlane for the actual Spawn number one. Now, uh, there are 450 of these, specifically this book, on the census. Uh, it is significantly more expensive than a Spawn number one. Uh, and his, uh, his image is not only featured on the front, it's actually featured on the back. Uh, this hits stores on May 1st of 1992 and um, was widely thought of as uh, the uh, kind of one of the earliest issues because there's one that predates this that kind of flew under the radar, and we'll talk about that in a second. Now, this one is special even among the Malibu Sun 13s because it is actually the air variant. I'm not completely sure why the coloring looks the way it does on here. It looks very, very early 90s if you ask me as far as the colors that are being used, a lot of greens and purples and blues. Uh, oftentimes if something is, uh, if an air like this is consistent on the entire cover, that tells me that one of the three color plates was missing when this was originally printed. Um, but that's just speculation on my part. I would love uh, if anybody actually has more information on that either first-hand knowledge or something they heard, I would love to hear that in the comments below. However, for this air copy, opposed to the 450 co um, copies on the census for this original book, there's only 64 of the air. So that's gonna add another huge premium to this specific book. It's actually very hard to calculate the value um, just looking at the market because these don't actually pop up uh, as available for sale very often at all. And um, you can also kind of get a sense for that uh, kind of that feature for this book because regardless of the grade that this book comes up in, um, the, the price is still all over the place. You know, it, it might be 2000 for a 7.5 and then 1500 for a 9.2 and kind of go just oscillate back and forth. And that's a really, really good um, telling kind of quality of the, of the price data that people just want the opportunity to buy the book and uh, how much it is for the, uh, like in, in paired up with the grade, doesn't matter as much. So this is a really neat book. This is the only one I've ever seen. It's probably one of the only ones I'm gonna see for a while. It is that rare. So there's over 16,000 Spawn Ones uh, on the census, 450 Malibu Suns, 64 of the air copy, and then we come to a book that came out in April of 1992. This is Rust number one, and all of these on the, uh, on the CGC label will say full page uh, uh, early appearance of Spawn number one, first appearance of Spawn, uh, and it also says that the ad was by Todd McFarlane. Uh, let's see the data on this one. There's 151 of these 
on the uh, on the census. And this clearly predates the Malibu Sun. But most stores back then did not carry Adventure Comics, which is the publisher for this book. Uh, and there's actually only 10,000 copies of this limited edition version as well. Um, the ad is on the back, uh, the inside of the back cover. And it actually features in a, a black and white sketch version of the art from Spawn number two. We'll get a, an image of that up for you, no problem. Uh, he still had the, uh, the, the Spawn logo, was still using the, the, the Malibu Sun logo, as it is very different compared to the one that they actually use on Spawn 1. Um, but because a lot of shops didn't have this and awareness was extremely low, and we were, of course, in the very early days of the internet back in uh, April of 1992, um, most people really didn't realize that this not only had Spawn in it, but it also significantly predated the Malibu Sun. Everybody saw the Malibu Sun. That one became the very cool to get item uh, if you were a hardcore Spawn collector so you could set your collection apart from everybody else's. Uh, and that's kind of just how the, the story goes. Now, the market uh, values the Malibu Sun 13 the most and then probably the Spawn 1 black and white and then the Spawn newsstand and then the rust and then Spawn number one if, you, if you're looking at equal grades for all of them. Uh, that being said, we have a significant amount of kind of spawn speculation and popularity just around the corner uh, ever since issue 300 and the, uh, the Gunslinger and the most recent features uh, in, in comics recently as the, uh, the, the title is still going. Uh, we also have a movie coming up. So I think all of these books, all of these items will be looked at again and kind of reevaluated and the, uh, the market will be given another chance to decide which one is the true first appearance which one is the true item to really set your, your spawn collection apart, and which one is just, which one is just a must-have that, that you know, everybody who's a spawn fan at all should have. Uh, now, one, another book that's not a spawn book but I, that I would like to talk about, which may have been overlooked in the past couple years, is Amazing Spider-Man 700. Well, this is a ratio variant. Uh, it's a retailer incentive ratio, ratio variant, one in 200. Um, Let's see, this is the Ditko remastered uh, variant cover. So this is the, the cover that Ditko originally submitted to Marvel and Stan Lee as the cover for Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, of course, they went with a different layout, which featured some of Jack Kirby's art as well. But it is very, very neat to see this actually published and released uh, as a uh, kind of a milestone incentive um, it's, the image has been featured a couple of other times, but never on the cover of a book. Uh, and again, this is a 1 in 200, so there are very few of these. The census data says there's only 889, 637 of, of them are signed. Okay, so it's a signature series book. Stan Lee signed it. However, there's one more feature about this book that makes it stand even farther apart than the rest. So we have a different um, cover than AF-15. Uh, it was uh, Ditko's instead of Ditko and Kirby. Uh, this was a, a retailer incentive. It's signed by Stan Lee. It's also signed by Stan Lee on his 90th birthday. Uh, I, I, obviously, he did a witness signing that day, and he signed um, probably a good amount of books then, you know, maybe a couple hundred. It's hard to tell. But if you are a hardcore Stan Lee Signature Series collector, you're going to want to have at least one book that was signed by him on his 90th birthday. And if it's as cool as this one, it may even fetch a very, very serious premium um, for that specific collector in that specific collector's eyes. So, a lot of different layers, whether it's a modern book, an almost vintage book, we're going back farther for various uh, vintage books and newsstands and whatnot. There's a lot of different things that can make these books uh, more or less uh, attractive for the hardcore collector, but I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about some things that we had recently gotten in the store, use some examples, and maybe pass on a little more information to the comic book community out there. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. All these books are going to be featured on our live sale coming up uh, this Friday from 5 to 8 uh, p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so hopefully we'll, we'll see some of you out there. Take care. Thank you.